Hello and welcome to this next tutorial on using games in uh, on Windows. So I'm going to be talking about running geometry optimizations today. We're going to look at visualizing the results and also looking at the orbitals. So first thing that I like to do is build my molecule in a molecule builder. Avogadro is typically the one I use the most. It's pretty intuitive, pretty easy to use. Today's molecule is going to be n nitroso dimethylamine. So we're going to start drawing it out. So just draw a methyl group there, um, attach it to the central amine, um, and then start off the nitroso group there and build our carbons here. Um, and then our oxygen for the nitroso. So it doesn't look particularly good right now, but we're going to sort of optimize the geometry, even basic optimization inside of Avogadro will suffice. So there's actually an input generator in Avogadro. There's ones for games, US, Games UK, Gaussian, Malpro, Mopac, and uh, other different types of uh, computational software. So Games UK is not the one we want. Sometimes it's also known as Firefly. It is a fork of games, but it forked some time ago. So we want games and then we want to go to input generator. So uh, that input generator is shown here. There's two tabs up at the top. There's basic setup, advanced setup. Um, both are actually kind of too basic for our purposes too basic for what I like to use. And actually, if I just use these, it, they won't actually run on my computer because this molecule is a little bit too complicated for the basic default games options. So you can change a, a few things here. Like for example, we can change that to equilibrium geometry. We'll see that there's a new word added, run type optimize. Then we could change, for example, a DFT, um, for example, the B3 lip um, functional, that would then add a new uh, keyword DFT type to our control, which is a control for the calculation. You can even add uh, solvation models like water and so on. So um, you can also edit it down here. It is a text editor of sorts. You can change uh, values here if you so wish. And um, if you don't want to do it in an actual text editor. So that's kind of the event setup has additional information different uh, options that you can change. Uh, you can also calculate uh, Hessians, which are your first step towards getting a frequency or a vibrational frequency. Okay, so now that I've drawn this, I could generate my input file and then edit it later, but I'm just gonna jump, jump straight over to my input file that I'm going to use uh, and explain it line by line. So the first line here is a comment that's indicated by this exclamation mark, which means that games will not make use of this line when determining the parameters for the calculation. So we could actually use this to comment out lines in the calculation, which we don't want to use in that particular calculation. The next line starts off with a, an empty space, which is vital in games uh, input files. So that's an empty space, then a dollar sign, then a word which represents the type of input um, information that we're going to get. So this dollar sign basis means that we're going to have basis set information. So this is our 631G basis set. Um, the next one is the dollar, and then it ends with dollar sign end. Each line or each type of input parameter will uh, end with dollar sign end. The next line then is dollar sign control. So this controls information about the calculation. So it controls like, for example, the SCF type, it contains the run type information. So this is an optimization run. Uh, it also controls the DFT functional that we might be using. Of course, you don't have to use a DFT functional. We just are in this case. Then um, starting point, stat point, um, that controls, for example, the uh, tolerance of the optimization. So how small the energy difference between two geometries has to be in a, before we declare that we have actually got an optimized geometry. Then the number of steps has been increased from the default just so we don't have to restart the calculation because we haven't quite reached the equilibrium geometry. Then the next line is going to be dollar sign system. That is going to be the line that I've added here for my personal 
uh, preference. So I've increased the time limit to the maximum allowed by games. And then I've also increased the memory allocated to games significantly so that the calculation will run unhindered because if you use the default value, most likely it will throw an error that it doesn't have enough memory to actually do the calculation. Then the last part is usually the dollar sign data, um, at least in simple geometry optimization calculations. Um, this is going to contain information about the actual molecule or molecules. Um, so there's a title, first of all. So I've called this n nitroso dimethylamine geometry optimization. Quite simple. Then um, the point group for the molecule. You've got to be careful with this. Um, I typically, for most molecules, will just um, leave it as a C1. It doesn't tend to um, improve the quality of the calculation or the speed too much, at least in my experience. Your results may vary. Um, then the next thing is going to be actually the atoms involved. So the carbon, nitrogen, hydrogen, then their uh, atomic numbers, and then their um, X, Y, Z coordinates. And then, of course, it ends with dollar sign N at the end. And then this would be our input file. So this is the input file we're going to run. Um, we're going to run it in games, of course. So um, going to write run. This is already in my games directory. So we're going to run games nitro so die methylamine. So then obviously the um, version of your game software. I'm going to change the number of course to eight, and then nitro so die methylamine log. Okay. So that calculation should hopefully run. Um, oh, okay. Not enough memory on my computer for that. Okay, so I'll just clean up a little bit. So this shows you actually a good way to restart off. Uh, you have to, like if I just tried to rerun that, actually I can show you that now. Um, it will throw an error, or at least it should throw an error that um, it find the restart files already. Um, it didn't, it's actually running this time. That's quite strange. Um, hmm. So it's running right now. Um, so it's running on eight processors, um, and then it will eventually output the data file. We're then going to look at the output in WXMAC mole plot. Um, there it will show us the energies of the different steps. It will show us the geometries um, at each step of the equilibrium process. And then um, it'll finally, we'll finally use it to look at the uh, orbitals of this molecule, especially the HOMO and LUMO orbitals. Okay, so the calculation is done. So we need to check if the calculation is run successfully. So open up our output file, the .log file. And then there's two things we're going to check. We're going to check that equilibrium geometry has been found. So the first thing is search equilibrium. So your equilibrium geometry located. So that's perfect. Um, then we're going to make sure that the game's calculation exited normally. And there we go. It has exited normally. Perfect. Okay, so that calculation has run as well as it could have done based on our parameters. So we're then going to open up in our wxmacmol plot the output file. Um, so there's our molecule, um, the n nitroso dimethylamine. Um, so this is frame 31 of 31, and it's got an energy of minus 264.3256 with an RMS of 0 0.000. Okay. So we can actually animate each one of these frames like that, um, which is kind of nice. It shows a little bit of a rotation around this methyl group was one of the major changes. And some of the bonds got shorter, like this nitrogen. Nitrogen bond seems to have gotten shorter. Um, then bottom right, we can go move this slider along and we can go from frame to frame. We need to go to the last frame in order to be able to plot the uh, orbitals later on, because those are the only ones that have had the orbital information printed. So check out the energy plot. We can actually see how the energies change as a function of each geometry. So you can see here the energy is generally decreasing over time. And so there's been a few attempts, like for example, here and here to change the geometry significantly. 
to try and um, see if we actually have reached the equilibrium geometry. Okay, so the the orbitals then. So I'm going to go back to just look at the molecule itself, go to subwindow in WX Mac mole plot, and then go to surfaces. So the surface I want is the 3D orbital. That's okay. Um, and then this opens up a bunch of different information. So on the bottom left, it will tell us the orbitals that we can choose, the molecular orbitals. Um, so the number 20 is highlighted in blue as being the highest occupied molecular orbital. And we can check that by looking at the occupation number, which is in fact two. So that's all good. Okay. So then uh, we want to change some of the parameters and we can just you know, plot that homo. Um, there we go. So we can see there, not terribly attractive looking or terribly pretty, but at least you get the idea of how the orbitals can be formed. So you can change some of the options here. Like for example, if I change the number of grid points, I will get a better looking uh, orbital. So update that. So you go. It already looks a lot nicer. Um, if I change the contour value, if I make it a little bit less, um, makes it a little bit bigger. I make the grid size a little bit bigger. It makes the orbitals. It, it changes the parameters of the orbital. So you just change it around a little bit to get the information that you need for your particular use case. But using a simple geometry optimization in Games US, we've been able to plot the orbitals. So thank you for watching this and um, please uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel and check out our other videos on computational chemistry, chemistry in general, and science topics. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.